Hey guys, today I'm going to be filming for you the Best of Beauty 2014. I'm going to be showing you in this video all of my favorite beauty products that I have come across in 2014. Now, this may not include everything, and I'm going to try and do as many swatches and things as I can. Because there's going to be so many makeup products featured in this video, I don't know if it's going to be as good as it could be. But I just wanted to go through everything that I am loving. I may have mentioned this before in previous videos, but if that's the case, then um, just feel free to skip over that part or just you can maybe learn a little bit more about it and why I love it. But you guys, uh, I'm going to be really talking about a lot of products in this video. So I would imagine this is going to be a long one, but this is going to be all of my favorite makeup beauty products products of 2014. I'll also mention that if you guys would like a full makeup look on this, I did a like a chit chat get ready with me while I did this eye makeup look. So if you guys want to see how I did that, the link will either be in the description of this video or the video will be up soon. So I'm not sure which one I'll do first, but I think I'll do this favorites video first and then I'll put up the makeup look so it should be up soon. Now disclaimer, before I get into this video, normally I'm very chatty and talkative and funny and I'm trying to yeah, but I want to get through them and I want to explain to you guys why I love them all. I'm going to try and keep the descriptions of these things brief, but um, the more I waffle on and on about these things, the more the longer this video is going to be. So there will be some personality in here, but just so you know, it's going to be a lot of information. So I'm going to start off with foundations and concealers and I'm going to go from there. So as no surprise to anybody, my absolute favorite foundation of 2014 that's going to run over into 2015 is my Revlon Color Stay Foundation. They have this in the dry skin formula and the combo oily skin. This is the combo oily skin. I accidentally bought this. I was normally using the dry skin formula before. I feel like that one worked a lot better on my skin, but either way, they both work great. This is the color uh, 150 Buff. Excellent foundation. The wear of this is like no other no, no other foundation can beat the wear of this foundation this probably lasts me i don't know i would say like 14 to 24 hours this honestly would it says 24 hour wear on there and that's not a lie this is an excellent foundation it it, it stands alone in my opinion i've never found a foundation that is as good as this and i have about 19 to 25 i can't i can't remember exactly but i have about 25 possibly foundations in my drawer and this one wins every single time amazing it you don't need to set it with a powder it will set into a beautiful satiny flawless but semi matte finish full coverage foundation excellent also if you're looking for another even heavier coverage foundation but still a beautiful porcelain doll finish this is the Revlon Colorstay whipped foundation amazing quality just as good as the other one, except for I think I prefer the Revlon Color Stay better. This is more for if you want a very heavy, full, full, full coverage, but very perfect looking skin. Both work excellent. I prefer the other one, but I do love this one as well. A good summertime foundation that's a lot, it's, it's, it's good for, especially when you want to do a quick uh, makeup application where you're not having to fuss with it too much. I have a full foundation review on this, which I will link in the description of this video. But this is the CoverGirl Ready Set Gorgeous Foundation, and it is amazing. It's an excellent foundation. It, it gives a very natural, I won't say dewy, but very porcelain doll-like appearance as well. Makes your skin look absolutely perfect. A beautiful foundation. And the last favorite foundation is the CoverGirl Outlast Stay Fabulous 3-in-1 Foundation. This is, of all of them, probably the most porcelain doll looking skin. I have hair, like cat hair, all over my face. Really good foundation, inexpensive. Everyone I've turned on to this has absolutely loved it. It is a very, 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 very beautiful foundation. Also full coverage. As you can tell, I like full coverage foundation because I feel like it's almost a waste of time to go with anything else, especially because you can sheer out a full coverage foundation, but building up a light coverage foundation just takes so much more of the product and it makes your face look cakier. So a full coverage is the way that I like to go. Awesome. I prefer the application of this one better, meaning I love that it has the pump. I wish that the Revlon Colorstay had the pump. If it did, it would be number one perfect of all time. The Revlon Colorstay is my holy grail. I will use it forever, but I also really love this one. And when I'm feeling like I want to change it up, I always go to this. My absolute favorite concealer that I've used more than any other concealer. It's my third repurchase. I absolutely love it, and I will continue to use it until the dawn of time. The dawn of time? I feel like the dawn of time has already happened. That is the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. I use color NC15. Full, full, beautiful, amazing coverage. No creasing. I don't need to set this concealer. It works perfectly on my under eyes. I use it also to prime my lids for uh, the any shadow that I choose to use. 
it is so amazing. It is worth every penny. I think it's only like 18 or $20, which sounds like a lot, but this will last you so long. Excellent. The only thing that would make this better is if it was a doe foot applicator, in my opinion. I love the Prolong Wear Concealer, but I think that the pump, it pumps out too much product, which you'll hear time and time again on YouTube. It does, it pumps out too much product, but I've learned to hack it to where I can get out half of the amount of product. It is amazing, so good. You guys will absolutely love this. Nobody that I would ever recommend this to, I know they wouldn't hate this. This is above and, above and beyond all else the best concealer I've ever used. Second favorite concealer, which um, I, I'm a little back and forth on, but I do, I'll do. i tell you why. The NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. Now you'll see every single YouTuber and their mama and their mama's mama talking about this shit on YouTube. It's a good concealer, but I hate it for my under eyes. I love the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer for my under eyes, but I hate the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, and I will tell you why. It creases like a mofo on my eyes. However, it, it's very cakey and crumbly looking under my eyes, but what this is amazing for is carving out your lips and your eyebrows. Now, I didn't do either of those today because I just didn't feel like mussing and fussing with concealing out my fucking under eye and my lips and shit. This is so good for that because it's got the doe foot applicator and you can put just a tiny little amount on the back of your hand, use your uh, flat brush and really carve out your lips, especially if you're doing a dark lip color or if you want your eyebrows to look perfect but highlighted, which I did on New Year's Eve and my eyebrows lasted in all night. They didn't smudge, they didn't smear. I, I looked as good at the end of the night as I did at the beginning, which is amazing. That is what I like this for. I'm not a huge fan of this, like I said, under the eyes, but for everything else, I do really like this. For contour, my all-time favorite of this last year, it's it's been my favorite, but it's also my it's not my favorite in some ways, and I'll, I'll explain to you why. Is the Anastasia Contour Kit. Now, this is an excellent product. It's got six shadows in it. I wouldn't call them shadows. They're highlight and contour kit. For highlight, don't like this kit. I would say that the colors aren't light enough to highlight with. Um, and this yellow shade, I've seen some people like highlight with the banana shade, but it's so yellow that it just makes you almost look jaundiced when you use it. This color here, which is Fawn, is a really, really good contour color. It's so cool toned that it looks like a really good shadow on your skin. I am wearing it today, so if you like the way this contour looks, it's fun. These colors are a lot more warm, so if you want that really bronzy, warm, summery glow look, these are kind of your color. Um, I don't use these ones nearly as much. If I ever want like a tad bit of a lighter shade, then I might, but because I am so fair, these colors, ha they look like they would be light enough, but it, it's not quite light enough. I mean, it's, it's okay, but I'm not a big fan of setting my under eye concealer anyway. So anyway, this is the Anastasia Contour Kit. I do like it. I believe it's $40, um, but it is worth it. If you think about, if you do a price breakdown of it, if you bought individual colors, um, so if you, what is that, six, 40 divided by six, I should be able to do math because of 27, but. Uh, so it makes them about like $7 per color, which is really not bad. It's kind of drugstore pricing if you think about if you were to purchase these each individually, you sometimes have to kind of think about it that way instead of looking at the whole kit and be like, oh my god, $40! Another one that I've used a ton this last year, I got for Christmas last year, and that is the Benefit Hula Bronzer. It is a little more warm toned than the Fawn from the Anastasia Contour Kit, but it is really pretty. I've used this about half the year. I kind of have forgotten about it the last like six months or so, but the first six months of the year I used it like every single day. It is a really good um, contour color. Like I said, it's a bit warmer. Everyone says that it's the perfect contour shade. Depends on your skin tone. It could be the perfect contour shade for you or it might not. This is I think $28. I'm not certain on that. Um, it's not, it's something you could probably do without, but I really like it. I think it's a good shade. Um, I don't know if it's worth like all the hype that surrounds it on YouTube, but for me, it was a favorite this year because I used it about half the year religiously over and over again, and I really liked the way that it looked. And another really good contour is the NYX Blush in Taupe. And you're gonna see everybody and their mama talk about this as well. It is the coolest tone of all of them. It is a, it's, it's a blush, I, I would guess, is what they call it, but um, it works best for a contour. In my opinion, it is the closest to like what a shadow would naturally look like on fair skin. So if you guys are looking for a really good uh, contour color that's not going to break the bank and you just want something simple and cool toned, the NYX Taupe Blush is probably a really good choice for you. 
On to blush now, which I never really felt like much of a blush person person prefer. I never really felt like much of a blush person before, but as I've come to notice, it can really change the entire makeup look, uh, just depending on what colors that you choose. So, my all-time favorite blush, which I just started using in the last month or so, which you may not think is very fair to add into a makeup favorites video, but it is so beautiful. It is the Tarte Captivating Blush. I'm wearing it today so you can see what it looks like on the skin. Gorgeous. The Tarte blushes, I know everyone was like raving about them and there have been multiple Tarte products that I've tried and did not like and actually returned to Sephora. So for me sometimes I was kind of like it hit and miss, maybe I don't like Tarte products in general. This blush though gives me life. I absolutely love it. What do you guys think? It is such a gorgeous blush. Plus, if you wanted to depot the blush, it's as simple as whacking it on the back of your hand. You can throw this into a Z palette if you want for easy travel, but this bitch doesn't go anywhere because uh, I ain't got no money to travel. Another blush that has been like my all-time favorite coming up this year, and you can see because I've hit pan on this, and I don't hit pan on blush very often. This is the Vincent Longo Desert Rose Dewdrop Radiant Blush, and you'll look at it and you'll say like, yeah, it looks pretty light. It doesn't look really that good at all, and you can't even see it swatched on the back of your hand. But when you put this on your cheeks, it gives the most natural, beautiful, healthy, real-looking blush. It, I got this in my Wantable box. If you guys are wanting to sign up for Wantable, I'll put the link in the description of this video as well. You can just click on the link and subscribe through there. It's a monthly subscription service that sends you full-size makeup products, and um, it actually is full-size. It's not like an Ipsy bag where you get that and they're like, it's full-size, and then you get it and it's a shitty old sample. They're actually full-size makeup products, and they do send a lot of Vincent Longo, and I'll show you some other products that I've gotten. But um, it's $36 per month, and you can choose either between makeup, uh, jewelry or intimates is what they call them and they're like either clothes jewelry or and they send you like a bunch of different things so if you're looking to get a good monthly subscription service in my opinion sometimes they send some weird makeup products but it, uh, sometimes they send you a total winner like this one and this they sell at Nordstrom for a lot actually I'm gonna go tell my husband to turn that fucking movie down because god damn it he knows I'm filming I'm sorry if you can hear like like ride of the fucking Valkyries coming from the living room but my husband's watching some sort of kung fu movie Anyway, this blush is amazing. I don't know, there's much, not much more I can say about it other than it's lovely and beautiful and it's absolutely been one of my all-time favorites through 2014. Another favorite of mine are the Clinique Cheek Pop blushes and the colors that I have are Peach Pop and Plum Pop and you can see they still have like the flower imprint in them because even though you use these a lot, they still... They, they, these will last a long time. They are like a mixture between a cream and... They're not cream, they're totally powder, but they they just give such a gentle, beautiful blush to the cheeks. And the colors look really intense, but they go on very soft and smooth. And so these have been a really lovely blush and I've loved having them. Probably of all of the blushes, this one was my most well-loved and most favorite of all of them. This is the Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso such an amazing color. It is an orange, soft, shimmery, gorgeous color. I mean, if you're gonna get any of these blushes, either the Tarte Captivating or this one. I mean, oh, oh my god, this is affordable. So if you're gonna go for like drugstore type of pricing, this is, I mean, get it, get it, and you need this in your life. It's such a beautiful blush. I don't know who this wouldn't look good on. So beautiful. It gives you just like such a fresh, glowing, dewy, beautiful, luminous finish to your cheeks. So good. And the last one that I'm going to talk about is this. This is the Tarina Tarantino Blush Quad. It is a doll skin cheek palette. And for one, the packaging is amazing. I got this also in my wantable box, so if you guys are like on the fence of whether you want it or not, look at the type of thing you could get. This is a full-sized, amazing product. You've got really beautiful blushes in here, um, and they're really super pigmented, really beautiful, good finishes. Uh, just there's not a, hot, a whole lot that I could say about this that's negative at all. Um, I haven't worn this a whole ton ton, but every time I do wear it, I notice that they're not so pigmented that they're going to make your face look weird. Sometimes you can put a blush on and it's like balls of color on your cheek, which nobody wants balls on their face. <laughs> well, I do. This is 
pigmented enough to where you get the color payoff, but it's not so pigmented that you're going to ruin your makeup by applying too much. So I absolutely love this. Again, this is the Tarina Tarantino Doll Skin Cheek Palette. Now moving on to highlights. I only have three highlights to talk to you guys about. I'm going to start off with my all-time favorite of the entire 2014, which is definitely going to move on to 2015, and that is, no surprise to anybody, the Balms Mary Luminizer. This is the perfect highlight in my opinion. I am wearing it today, which it's a little difficult to tell because my lighting is bright, but it is just a gorgeous, luminous, soft, champagne-y, yellowish white highlight, as you can tell. It is gorgeous. This is best suited for fair skin. Um, if you were to use this on darker skin, it could probably look a tad bit ashy, but if you are fair skinned and you are looking for something really, really beautiful, get this highlight. You will not regret it. I love applying it with the uh, Sigma tapered highlighting brush, which I'm going to talk about brushes in a little bit, but it's such a beautiful highlight. Nothing compares to the Mary Luminizer in my opinion. My second favorite highlight of the year is the MAC Soft and Gentle highlight and it's just, it's a lot more of a peachier pink tone to it. Um, as you can tell, comparing the two, the Mary Luminizer is much more white. This one is super gorgeous though. It gives a very beautiful uh, champagne-y rose gold finish and it's just a totally different highlight. They both give a really beautiful highlight though, so if you're looking, you can't go wrong with Soft and Gentle or Mary Luminizer, but if you've got a little bit darker of a skin tone or if you've got more pink undertones, this would probably suit you a little bit better. Gorgeous. And the third highlight that is the cheapest, but you can get it at the drugstore, is the Wet n Wild Fergie uh, Center Stage Collection, and it's called To Reflect Shimmer Palette. And it is also a really beautiful highlight. As you can see, for the drugstore, um, it really does a good job. You can't see my swatch for shit. So if you're looking for drugstore priced things that aren't, so not everything's high end that you have to buy, the Center Stage uh, Wet n Wild Fergie Shimmer thing to reflect, lovely. Now on to mascara. So as you guys have known, if you've been watching my videos for a long time, some of my absolute favorite mascara is the Maybelline the Rocket Volume Express Mascara. This is a beautiful mascara if you want just an everyday, inexpensive, T toss it on your lashes, you know your lashes are going to look good and last all day. Very black, very pigmented, they separate your lashes, they are volume. they're more volume than they would be length, but they still add a nice bit of length to your lashes. Love this mascara. My all time favorite mascara of 2014 is the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. I have a full uh, review of this mascara, I'll link in the description of this video if you guys want to watch just a video straight on this. The only negative that, that I have to say about this is that it flakes like a bitch. Um, you put this on and your lashes look like better than they've ever looked in their entire life. They're long, they're fluffy, they're sexy, they're amazing looking. And then throughout the day you'll notice little black specks on your cheek because it flakes pretty badly. It's such a fluffy mascara that, it, I mean, it's bound to happen. I think this is like 23 to 27, I'm not sure about the price of this. but. It's a really good mascara. If you're looking for something that you know is going to make your lashes look amazing, this is definitely worth getting. Even if it does have some flaking, just try the sample size if that's the case, but really, really good mascara. One of my new favorites that I had sent to me was the Tarte Lights Camera Lashes Mascara. Now, it's not like the most revolutionary, amazing mascara that you're ever going to buy, which a lot of people on YouTube will say, but it is a really good mascara. I really like it. The brush isn't so large that it's going to take up your entire face, but it is large enough to get a really good lift on your um, on your lashes. I mean, it's fucking for lashes. So, uh, yeah, I really love the Lights Camera Lashes. It's very weird, too. It's like this faux leather snake skinny looking case. It's very strange, but I do really like that. I also really like the Vincent Longo, what is this called? Volume Plus Mascara in Black. What I like this for is my bottom lashes. Because the brush is pretty small, it's small enough and flat enough that, because you see it's such a straight brush, that it's really good at getting those bottom lashes. I really like it for that. It's also very black and just really easy to work with. It's not the most amazing mascara I've ever used in my life. I also got this in a wantable box. This was a really good wantable box that I got. Um, but I really like this mascara, especially for when I'm wearing lashes. If I forget to put mascara on before I put my fake, fake lashes on, then I'll just do a couple of coats of this gently. And it doesn't really touch my false lashes, but it gets my eyelashes really good. For eyeliner, my I'm really into liquid liners for my top liner. 
the I have three I'm gonna mention and my ultimate favorite of all these three and my most used has to be the blink ultra thin liquid eyeliner pen I got this from Sephora I believe it's like $23 it's a little bit more spendy but I do have two more affordable options for you here so don't freak out um, this one is a felt tip pen the felt tip is very fine so you can do a really nice line with this it is very easy to do a good winged eyeliner with. Mine's pretty well dried out because I bought this like, I don't know, like nine months ago. And um, it's well loved. I've really used the shit out of this pen. Best liquid liner that I have found at the drugstore is the NYC liquid liner. I heard Crispy talk about this. I've seen a lot of people talk about this on YouTube and I didn't believe him, but I said, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna go anywhere and I'm gonna get it. I went and picked it up. The first tube that I ever got was a horrible. It was liquidy, it was gray, it didn't have that black pigmentation and I thought, you fuckers are liars. But they weren't liars actually because I went and picked up a second tube of it because I thought I'd heard like seven more people talk about it and it couldn't be bad if they were all saying it. Shake it up, shake it up, shake it, shake it, shake it like a soft shake up. Then you've got this brush which is long and skinny and it is a true liquid liner brush. It's not like a felt tip, it's an actual like paintbrush end. It is black as hell. It is the blackest liner. It dries matte. It's very long lasting. Shockingly, for like the two or three dollars that it costs, it is such a good liquid liner. It's probably one of the best ones I've ever used. Easy to work with in my opinion because of the brush. It flicks really nicely. I am wearing it today as my liquid liner. It is very good. Another really, really, really good one from the drugstore is the Physician's Formula Eye Booster. It is a lash boosting eyeliner and serum, and I got the color Ultra Black. Now this is more of like a felt tip liner, but it is like a brush as well. Very black, very pigmented, especially if you shake it up first. Really nice, and apparently it's supposed to make your eyelashes like longer and fluffier, and I don't know, I've only used it a few times, so I can't attest to that. But I heard about this from the Taylor on YouTube, I think I'm saying that correctly, and um, she raves about this, so I had to of course go buy it because it looks amazing every time she uses it. The only thing I'm not a huge fan of is this, that I feel like it dries a little bit glossy and I prefer a matte finish, so I like to put this on and then maybe like powder over it a little bit. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of glossy eyeliners, I feel like they draw a little of weird attention and show, show things that aren't necessarily there, so I prefer this a little bit more if it was a little more matte but it's still super beautiful. So if you're looking for a really easy to use eyeliner from the drugstore, this one is amazing. My holy grail eyebrow product for this entire year has been the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. It's what I'm wearing now. You guys can see I am like almost finished with this container. I, I have like a goal to finish this thing. I just, for some reason I wanna, I just wanna finish it. I don't know what it is about it. But it is an excellent product. As you can see, I have another backup container waiting to be used. I use the color chocolate. It is kind of the perfect color for my, it's, I kind of have some red tones in my hair and I feel like it's the perfect eyebrow color for my face. Amazing. I use this with my Zoeva winged liner brush. Is it a winged liner brush? It is so good, you guys. Amazing brow product. It gives me the perfect gradient brows that I like. I also really love the Anastasia Brow Wiz. I had mine. I would draw like fake freckles on with it. I would fill in my eyebrows with it. It was such a good product. And I lost it in my car because I always would use it in my car because I just felt like I, I liked it better in the sunlight. The tip of it was so perfect, but it's in my car. And, I've cleaned that fucker out like a thousand times and I can't find it, so I don't know where it's at. For an affordable eyebrow product, because you know I love the Anastasia Dip Brow, I use it every single day, it's amazing, it is worth every penny that you spend on it. However, if you want something good from the drugstore, the e.l.f. eyebrow kit is worth the $3 that I spent on it. It is a great product. One side is a gel, one side is a powder, and so you would use your you know, winged liner brush or whatever you have and you would also pout, you know, you would gel your eyebrows on and you would powder over it. It doesn't last nearly as long as the dip brow, which is why I went back to it. I was using the e.l.f. eyebrow kit because I had lost this. I didn't know where it went. And um, it, it works great, you guys. It's a great affordable eyebrow product. It's probably my favorite one that I've ever used from the drugstore. Definitely worth the $3 that you spend on it. Definitely go pick it up. This is the color dark, I think. Yep, dark. Um, I think they have light, medium, and dark, so if you have lighter hair, you can definitely go uh, a different shade than this, but it's a really, really, really good eyebrow product. Um, for my favorite eyeshadows, and this is going to come as no surprise to any of you either, my all-time favorite eyeshadow of 2014 are the Coastal Sense 252 palette. Amazing. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I talk about these in about every single video that I have. Excellent eyeshadows. 
very pigmented, most blendable I've ever used. 252 eyeshadows for $25, you can't beat that price. You get a multitude of different colors, super blendability, super pigmentation, worth every penny, worth every single penny. My second and probably second close up to favorite of the uh, Coastal Sense eyeshadows are the Makeup Geek shadows. Now these are the only colors I have. I'm definitely gonna get more, I love them so much. I'm wearing all Makeup Geek shadows today, um, but I absolutely love these, super blendable, very affordable. I love the Z palette. I love how easy it is. Just quick grab it out. I love that this bends backwards so I can just don't, it's no muss, no fuss. Very easy to use. You guys will love the Makeup Geek shadows. They're so good. Absolutely some of my favorite and they're really inexpensive. So if you just need a couple of shadows and you really want like a good black, definitely corrupt. I love Cocoa Bear. Uh, I absolutely love Bitten. Bitten is one of my favorite colors. And then of course the blending out colors like Beaches and Cream, Peach Smoothie. Another all time favorite is the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette. Oh my god. Oh my god. It smells amazing. It smells like you're just eating, like you're painting your face with cake. So good. The shadows are super creamy, super blendable, very beautiful. Every single color in here is lovely. You're, you can't go wrong with a Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. I wish they had a little bit more darker color, more darker. I wish they had a little bit more dark tones in here sometimes. I wish they had a good black. I wish they had some more transitional shades, but honestly, it's such a beautiful palette. Smells heavenly. So definitely worth the money if you plan on buying it. Although I didn't, I had that sent to me. And then of course nobody's going to be surprised. The ColourPop eyeshadows. These are the Super Shock shadows. I did a full review and swatches and uh, first impressions of my ColourPop eyeshadows. But if you guys are looking for an amazing, super creamy, super pigmented, so shimmery, like incredibly gorgeous, foiled pigment shadows, then the uh, ColourPop Super, Super Shock shadows are absolutely amazing, worth every penny. I think they're only $5 per shadow, which you can't go wrong. I'm trying to do things that are also affordable. I'm not trying to do all high-end things and all low-end things because there are of things in the middle, but these are drugstore pricing, but high-end quality. Absolutely amazing. If you want to watch the full review that I did, I will also link that in the description of this video. I did all the swatches of the colors that I got, and I got seven different colors. As most of you probably know from watching my videos in the past, that I am a nude lip girl. I like nude lips, I like natural lips. I also like crazy colors, but I'm absolutely a huge fan of nude, and so most of mine are going to be nude, most of them are gonna be glosses. However, um, I do have one or two that are colored. Um, my ultimate favorite lip product that you might be a little shocked by this entire year has been the Gerard Cosmetics 1995 lipstick. If you want that darker nude color, absolutely beautiful lipstick. This is created by Jaclyn Hill. So beautiful, so pigmented, not super drying, but it very matte. The color is that dark Kylie Jenner nude color. Um, super beautiful, amazingly pigmented, and I love the way this feels on my lips to where it really doesn't get on my teeth, but it really leaves a nice look to my lips. They are very, I mean, I, I just, I love it. I love the packaging. It's like my favorite packaging, so gorgeous. On the outside, when I do that lip, I do use the NYX Vanilla Sky Lip Pencil. This is my ultimate nude lip pencil. Such a beautiful nude color. It works for almost every nude lipstick because it's not too dark, but it's dark enough to be able to overline your lips a tad if they're very thin. My lips are really thin, as you can tell. Um, however, this is an excellent lip liner for that. NYX Tiramisu. Um, I, I have a lot of the NYX Butter Glosses, but this one is a really pretty color. It's like a pinky nude, uh, and I really like that. I also really love Creme Brulee and Maple Blondie. Gorgeous. I just don't have those on me otherwise. I'd be swatching those. Super gorgeous. I love the NYX Butter Glosses. Oh, they smell. They smell. Cake. Frosting. Frosting. I'm a lip gloss girl. I always love lip glosses. Lip glosses are better to me than lipsticks. I do love a good lipstick, but I'm a gloss girl. I really love the Milani Brilliant Shine Lip Gloss in Luminous. It's that color there. It's a lot like Luminoso Blush in the fact that it's got a very gold, beautiful shine to it. As you can tell, it's so beautiful. Love this as a lip gloss. I also, my all-time favorite lip gloss, and I don't know if you can even get this anymore. I don't think you can. It's the Revlon Lip Gloss in Shine City. So beautiful. I'm gonna put a little bit on right now and you're gonna see why. It's 
like the ultimate glossy gloss. Like it's so shiny. It's got these little flecks of silver glitter in it. Kind of like a whitish silver. So beautiful. It's the glossiest of gloss and I love a glossy lip. Such a beautiful lip gloss. My favorite nude lipstick is NYX Circe, Circe, I can't think of what it's actually called, but it's just a really pretty true nude color. It's very light, but it's very wearable in my opinion. I absolutely love this color so, so, so much. And for my favorite colored lip gloss lipstick, it definitely has to be the OCC Lip Tar in Black Metal Dahlia. Now, I don't know if you can necessarily tell, but it, it is a gorgeous metallic, oh, it's so beautiful. It's metallic, it's a metallic, you know the color Dahlia, have you guys seen it, like Black Dahlia of OCC? It's this, but it's metallic. That's the best way I can explain it. Very dark, burgundy, beautiful. Um, th these feather quite a bit, so I would definitely cut the outside of it with a good uh, concealer, like the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, and uh, you should be golden. Another lip favorite that I have that I completely forgot about is the uh, Lime Crime Velveteens, and they are a liquid to matte lip liquid, and they are so interesting. The consistency of them goes on liquid, dries to a completely matte finish. They do not budge. They are transfer resistant amazing lip product. Um, I know they're coming out with more neutral shades at the moment and um, I absolutely love these two. This one is Wicked and this one is Red Velvet. On the lips they are stunning. And a couple of random favorites that don't necessarily have a category but I have to mention them anyway because they're things that have changed my makeup game. Uh, the Real Techniques Expert... no? No? The Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. Mine is Dirt but then again I just used it. Love this so much. I also love the Beauty Blender. Mine are both hideously dirty, so don't even judge me. But they they, they make your makeup, they, they change everything. If you haven't tried these, you need to try these because if you're having trouble with your foundation looking gross or problems with uh, cakiness or brush strokes, these will change everything. Just use these damp, really plump them and bounce them into your skin. Game changer. It will come as no shock to anybody that the Josie Marin Argon Milk has been my skin savior for the last year. I absolutely love this. It's changed everything about my skin. It makes my skin supple and dewy and plush and bouncy and amazing. Love the Josie Marin Argon Milk. Mine is gone and I put some argon oil in the bottom of it because the container is so beautiful. But I've gone through, this is my third container of this. I love it so much. It's $56, which is expensive for a moisturizer, but it is amazing and worth every single penny. Another moisturizer, which is brand new to me, which you guys may not know about because I have not talked about it on my channel yet because I think I'm gonna do a full separate video, but it is one of the best moisturizers I've ever used and it has made my skin look younger and more amazing than it ever could even imagine. It is the Studio 35 Beauty Alpha Hydroxy Face Cream. I got this at Walgreens and it's like $8 and it is a life changer, you guys. It's a white cream that you rub on your face after cleansing at night. I usually do it at night because when you wake up in the morning, your skin is like a new person's skin. It's softer. It makes your fine lines disappear. I noticed that I'm starting to get some fine lines here because I do this face a lot. I shouldn't even do that. Ugh. I'm starting to get some fine lines going up my forehead and a couple of lines going this way to where when I notice like when I pull up, I'm like, oh, that's what my face used to look like. This removes those fine lines. It makes your skin so baby soft. No blemishes. Do you see any blemishes on this face? No, you don't because there aren't any because of this shit and the argan oil. Use both of them. Love them both. This is an amazing though. If you can't afford the argan oil, don't even worry about that. Go get this Alpha Hydroxy Face Cream from Walgreens Studio 35 Beauty. Game changer. One last moisturizing product that I'm going to talk about is the Elizabeth Arden 8 Hour Cream. This has been my favorite thing ever. I'm using this on my lips every single day because it's winter, it's dry, I'm dry as hell, my lips are chapped, everything's gross. My husband put this on yesterday because his lips were chapped and they're better today. It, I got the fragrance free kind because I think the Elizabeth Arden 8 Hour Cream smells real bad. Amazing. It's just like a petroleum jelly. but. There's just something about it that I really like. I like the tint that they used in it. I think it's really pretty. It's like a soft orangey color. And um, it's just it's just a really nice product. I really like it. Maybe it's just fucking Vaseline in a glorified container. But I really like it. My favorite lashes of 2014. I only have two pairs that I've been obsessing over. And the ones I'm wearing are the um, Velour Lashes in hashtag winging. Um, they come in this case here. 
I love them. I got them at iMats and I wear them all the time. The only complaint that I have about them is when I go to pick the glue off of them, even though I'm very gentle and I do this with all my House of Lashes lashes and it's no problem. With the Velour lashes, I pull out the piece of string that's holding the lashes together and so a bunch of lashes fall out all the time. This, that has happened to me maybe like five times, and I don't know how many strings are holding this shit together, but I've pulled out a lot of the lashes, but I love them. They're very beautiful. They're very fluttery and flirty, and these are probably my all-time favorite lashes. It's probably right up there with them are the House of Lashes Iconic Lashes. <sighs> these lashes are fluffy and amazing and beautiful, and they make any eye look look amazing. If you're going to get a pair of lashes, either these ones or these ones, Highly worth it. Hi, 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 highly worth it. To use, um, to glue them on, I use the Duo Lash Adhesive in the Dark Tone. This is my favorite lash adhesive that I've ever used. I have no problems with it. My eyelashes stay on for days, girl. Love it. Last but not least, I'm going to talk about brushes. Now, I'm going to whiz through these because I feel like this video has already been like 35 minutes long and so I really have to hurry because I think my battery is going to die. I'm going to start with eyes and then I'm going to move on to face. Eye brush, my Sigma E40 blending brush is amazing. This is perfect to blend out that transition shade that you want to be fluffy and a light coverage, but you want to um, just really, really soft blend. The Sigma E40 blending is amazing. Second favorite blending brush, I'm not, these are no particular order, I just love them all, is the Zoeva Luxe Soft Definer. This I use a ton and I've used it so much, probably more than any other eye brush. Amazing. I absolutely love this brush. It's really good for smoking out the crease of your eyeshadow if you don't want it to be too precise and perfect. This really gives a good fluffy smoke out. If you want a little bit more precision, the Lux Petite Crease Brush is incredible. Such a good brush. Very small and detailed and it can really get into those crevices where you want to really get that good defined crease. The Lux Petite Crease is really great and that's also Zoeva. I'm really liking my Sigma E25 blending brush. If I want a little bit more packed color in certain areas, this is a really good blending brush. Um, I just recently got this one so I'm not as keen on it but I do like it a lot. It's a good blending brush especially like I said if you want to get a little more color packed because it's a little more dense and a lot less fluffy. Another eye brush favorite is the Sigma E30 pencil brush and this is really great for smoking out the lower lash line. It's also really good for getting precision uh, blending and color where you would like it and good placement because it is a tapered pencil brush. It's very easy to work with. I really like this brush a lot. My holy grail, use every single day, most favorite eyebrow brush is the Zoeva 317 Wing Liner Brush. And this brush is excellent. It is so perfect for my eyebrows. It gets the lines to be just perfect. It's long enough that it gives good movement and fluidity to the brush, but it's short enough that it's not so long that it's like flicking all the directions. It's the perfect brush in my opinion. I use this with my Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. Perfect, perfect brows. In my opinion, they're perfect. A new brush that is my, one of my favorite brushes I think I've ever owned is the Sigma E15 Flat Definer. And it is this short, flat, very dense, and very stiff brush that I use to carve out my lips, to carve out my brows, and it works so well. I love it. I love how stiff and flat it is, so you can get exactly where you want it to be. You get those perfect lines. Everything's perfect with this brush. I absolutely love this one so, so, so much. For my favorite face brushes, I've got my Real Techniques blush brush. I like the size of this brush. I like um, that I pat on my blush with it. I like the way that it applies blush. I just think that it's a good all-around brush. I think you can get this at Walmart, Fred Meyer. You can get it at a lot of different stores. Um, it's, it's kind of, I wouldn't say it's, it's cheap. Uh, it's kind of mid-range. It's kind of the same price as the more expensive brushes, but kind of in between drugstore and high-end pricing. Another Real Techniques brush that I like is the Expert Face Brush. I use this to do my contour. I think it works really well because it's so densely packed, but it's a little bit of a wider brush to where it's not, it's, it's kind of like an oval-shaped brush. And it works really well to just get in there, really carve out your cheekbones, and then blend upwards. It really feathers out the product really well. I really like this brush for my contour. It's probably my favorite one. Another brush that is absolutely amazing is the e.l.f. Blush Brush. Now this is like a $3 brush. Super soft. It's really good for doing your blush. 
I like it best for my blush because it gives really good placement. It's small enough that you can tell it exactly where you want your blush to go and it's going to go in those spots. I did use it today for my blush, so if you like the way that that looks, then that is the brush that I used. Super good. I got this at Target for $3. A really good brush. I absolutely love it. And I also like it's sleek. It looks nice. Really nice. The Sigma F35 Tapered Highlighter Brush. This is the best highlighter brush I've ever used. It moves around so fluidly on the face. It's tapered, so you put the highlight just exactly where you want it. It doesn't over highlight, it doesn't under highlight, it's perfect. It packs it on really nicely, and I love the tapered look. I also love that it's pretty floppy. It's a nice floppy brush, so if you like that, this is a really good brush for um, putting on your highlights, if you catch my drift. Because we all know how I like things that flop all over my face. And that's it, I think, guys, for my 2014 beauty favorites. I loved a lot of makeup in 2014, and I feel like if you're going to get good makeup, go off of a recommendation of somebody else because you can make a lot of mistakes at the drugstore for products that are just super shitty or just not very good because you just look around it, and sometimes the packaging just draws you in, and sometimes those are the shittiest products. But sometimes something with really hideous packaging can be really good, or something that just looks kind of plain and dumb can be like the most amazing product. So definitely go check out these products if you guys haven't. I am going to try my hardest to link everything in the description of this video for you. Y'all know how much I hate doing that. I hate linking things in the description of the video, but I want to make sure that if you guys want to buy a product that I mentioned in this video, just click the links that I've provided and it will take you to the website, it'll take you straight to that product and you can browse from there. So. I hope you guys like this video. Let me know any standout products that you guys just fucking loved in 2014. I know there's going to be a lot more in 2015, but this was all of my 2014 absolute favorites. So if you guys would like to, I'm going to be posting every day through 2015 on my Instagram. So if you want to, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Those are all at Rob Beauty Christie. If you want to see high quality makeup pictures, like I said, Instagram. I'm posting every single day a high quality photo so go follow me on Instagram also if you guys want to see more videos from me just subscribe to my YouTube channel you guys want to know how to do that just click the subscribe link that I put here or uh, in you know where to I don't know you guys know how to subscribe to a channel I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you at my next video bye